Well, thank you guys so much for taking time out of your busy days to be here with me. I know that this time may be difficult, so I really appreciate you not only taking time to listen to me, but taking time for yourself as well. That's super important. So today we're going to be talking about self-care and stress management for entrepreneurs. Um, I'm Carissa Kust. I have a master's degree in business. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about myself. Um, so I'm an Interise instructor in West Virginia. This is actually my first year bringing the program to the state of West Virginia. It's been super exciting. So I know some of you guys work for Interise. Some of you guys are participants in the program. So I hope all of you guys can get something out of this. Uh, let me just check the chat real quick because I don't know if that's for me. Oh, okay. Nope. Okay, sorry. Anyway, I'm an Interise instructor. I'm absolutely loving it. I think the curriculum is fantastic for helping you guys get super clear on your growth plans. We're going to be talking today how we can incorporate some self-care into those growth, growth plans. I'm the founder and CEO of the University of Wellness. The University of Wellness is a mostly virtual school for wellness professionals. We train yoga teachers. We train wellness coaches. We train personal trainers. I also do business consulting and help people with their wellness as well. One of the biggest things that happens in my business consulting is I notice a lot of the people that come to me are not taking care of themselves or not putting their needs first and it's actually affecting their business. So I decided to start incorporating a lot of wellness consulting into my business consulting because if we neglect ourselves, it's ultimately going to hurt our bottom line and our business in the end. I'm a Forbes contributor. I write different blogs for Forbes. I actually write for some wellness related blogs as well, like Mind Body Green. So if you guys are into wellness, you may have heard of that. So um, yeah, there's different articles out there that I've either submitted to or uh, contributed to or wrote myself. So that's just a little bit about me. I'm super passionate about um, helping people find their purpose in business, helping people find their unique contribution to bring to the planet as well as helping them really work on themselves so that they can show up fully. And so I do that in a lot of different ways. But one of the most powerful ways I do it is working with business owners. I also do corporate wellness programs where I go into companies that are already existing and help the employees with their wellness because that's also important. Uh, we can't neglect the employees also need that that as well because you know we can work hard on ourselves but if our employees are also not taking time for themselves it also can hurt the bottom line and there's a lot of statistics out there on how wellness programs are actually really helping businesses grow and decrease healthcare costs so if that's something that you're interested in you guys can email me and I can send you some research or you can look some of that stuff up yourself um, so this is what we're going to talk about today. The first thing we're going to do after this slide is do just a basic little meditation. I always like to get people kind of grounded and focused so they can listen to me and not be doing a million other things. It also kind of gives you an idea of what meditation is if you've never done it before. So we're actually going to experience that at the beginning. Um, we're going to talk about how to create a daily routine for more success and abundance in our business. It's so important that we can create our days versus our days creating us. And I don't know about you guys, but in the past, I would wake up and my business would just take over. It was, what does this employee have to say? How many emails do I have? Oh, I have a thousand messages on Facebook. And next thing you know, I have not focused at all on my business growth. I've just been in it. So I'm going to teach you guys some techniques for getting in control of your day so that you can feel better about your time management and what you're you're doing on a daily basis that can help grow your company. Self-care for effective leadership, why it's important to make sure that you're incorporating self-care routines as you grow, um, as your business scales, you're going to, one of the first things that happens is we, we neglect ourselves. So we're going to talk about the importance of taking care of ourselves as our business grows. Um, also the five stages of the small business growth. Um, there are, with each of those stages, there are things that happen that make us not take care of ourselves. And so we're going to talk about the importance of that. You guys will either have learned that or will be learning some of that stuff in, in your week three, module three. How to have quality sleep. This is super important. I'd say 80% of the, the entrepreneurs that I speak to on a daily basis are either not getting enough sleep, they're going to sleep too late. 
Uh, they don't feel like their sleep is quality. They wake up exhausted. So we're going to be talking about some things that you guys can do to have a better night's sleep. Um, how to work less and accomplish more. I think one of the mindsets that we have as entrepreneurs is that we're, we're trading hours for money. So we think we need to work 20 hours a day to make more money. And at the end of the day, sometimes working less, delegating more, focusing on the bigger task at hand, you can actually make more money. This particular year, just to give you some personal experience for myself, I like to share things like that. Um, this is the biggest financial year I've had ever in my entire life in business. I actually have made more money this year already than I had all, all the last three years combined and it's only what may and I've worked less. And that's because I've incorporated some of the things that I'm going to teach you guys to do today. And some of this may be a refresher for some of you. Some of this may be completely brand new. Um, some of this may be stuff that you're already doing, but I hope something that you can take away from this that will help you with your own life and your business. So before we get into the, today's lecture, I just want you guys to get into a little bit of a meditation. So what you're gonna do is, I know most of you guys are probably at your office. If you're driving, obviously you don't wanna do this. <laughs> um, but if you could just get in your space, wherever you may be, if you're sitting at your desk. And I just want you to begin to close your eyes. And I just want you to bring your awareness to the natural rhythm of your breath. Just feeling the breath going in and out. And I just want you to begin to start breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. And just paying attention to that breath. Allowing any thoughts that may surface to just exhale your body with your breath. They're not important. The only thing that matters right now is this present moment. Continuing to focus on that breath, deep breath in through the nose and out through the nose. And let's do that two more times, in through the nose and out through the nose. And now I want you to take a deep breath in through the nose and I want you to exhale with a sigh. Just letting go of any stress or tension or worries that you may have picked up throughout the week or the weekend. Just allowing that to exhale your body with your breath. Another deep inhale in and exhale with a sigh. Nobody can hear you. Just as loud as you possibly can. They say the sound is like a thief. It stills the tension from your body. So the louder the sigh, the more you release. One more time, deep breath in through the nose and exhale. <sighs> Feeling your feet rooting firmly into the ground. Once again, knowing that the only thing that matters is this present moment. And I just want you to begin now to imagine as you're sitting there connected to your breath in this space that above your head is a beautiful ball of golden light. And some of you may be able to picture this and some of you may not, and that's okay. And I just want you to picture that golden light just breaking open and going in through the top of your head. Picturing it going down in through your forehead, in through your nose, in through your mouth, in through your neck. Slowly going down in through your chest, down into the abdomen down into your lower extremities, your quadricep muscles, down into your calf muscles, and in through your feet. And now this enti your entire body is filled with this golden light, teaching your brain to focus on the different areas of your body helps to remove stress and tension, just sitting there feeling as relaxed as you can. And as you're sitting in this space, I just want you to bring into your mind right now something that you, an intention that you would like to make to let go of maybe a bad habit that you have. It may be eating unhealthy. It may be sleeping late. It may be not sleeping enough. Just bring into your awareness one thing that you would like to just let go of today. It can be anything at all. And most of the time we know what it is. 
And it's okay if you get out of this meditation and you don't let go. But I just want you to immensely imagine that you're just let go, letting go of that with this meditation. And now I want you to bring into your awareness something that you would like to bring into your life. Self-care, more sleep, exercise, whatever it may be. Just mentally filling the intention of bringing that into your life. And I want you to hold those intentions. And now I want you to bring your awareness back to your breath just the natural rhythm of your breath. Once again, feeling your feet rooting firmly into the ground. Allowing yourself to feel safe and to feel focused in this present moment as we move into the, today's lesson. And I want you to slowly begin to open your eyes, wiggling your fingers and your toes, looking at your surroundings, coming back to the space. Hopefully I didn't put anyone to sleep. Awesome. So that's just a guided meditation. The reason why I have you guys set an intention is sometimes we don't even take enough time to focus on that which we want to bring into our lives and that which we want to get rid of. And so I just wanted you guys to set an intention for that. The reason why I use the light going down in through your head and down through all your body parts is to get you used to focusing on different areas that helps increase your focus, your concentration, your productivity. Um, it also lowers your blood pressure. It can do tons of different things. So that's a guided meditation. Um, you can simply just close your eyes and focus on your breath. And sometimes we have to do that because we're so stressed out. Um, some people really resonate with guided meditation and some people really like to just focus on an object. So find the best meditation that works for you if that's something that you're open to at all um, because it can really help you just be focused and centered. I do not get out of bed until I meditate. It's the first thing I do every single day. Um, it's, it's meditation or prayer or both um, and before I even step out of my bed and go throughout my day and it just makes every single thing better. I feel like I'm not reacting from the past or the future fears, you know, thoughts that are going on in my mind. I feel like I'm working from that space of being present in the moment and not angry about something that happened prior to that moment or projecting any fears that I may be thinking about. So meditation is huge. There's lots of research out there now on how it can increase your productivity, your bottom line. Mindful meditation is, a, is what they're really bringing into a lot of companies. So like I said, if you guys have any more questions on any of that, you can always email me. But a lot of this stuff is also available through Google. So the importance of scheduling and preparing your day. Some of you guys may be amazing at this and some of you guys may be absolutely terrible and some of you are doing it sometimes and some of you aren't. I created a, a tool. I'm going to try to open it here. Uh, let me make sure you guys can see that. Okay, so this is a miracle day planner. I created this for my students. I created this for my clients. Um, Laura is actually going to send this to guys to you. So if it resonates for you, I want you to use it. I personally like to use this every night for the next day. Some people will print it out for the entire month. Some people will print it out for the entire week. I have this in addition to my um, already existing schedule. This is something that I like to really sit down with at the end of each night and just really focus on what I'm going to be doing for the next day. So on the left, as you can see, you're going to put your schedule. So you're going to put all the different things that you're doing, your exercise, um, whatever it is that you're doing for your business, your appointments, your doctor's appointments, everything will go on the left. Um, what I mean by at the top of the right side, affirmation for the day. Some of you guys may set affirmations for yourself. An affirmation is basically just a positive sentence that helps get you out of the negative story that you might be telling yourself about your business or your life. So a good affirmation could be, um, I'm going to hire an amazing secretary, or I'm going to have an amazing day. I'm going to make $10,000 today. It can be money oriented. It can be life oriented. I always like to create my affirmation around whatever is the most pressing at the time. 
So if this week I'm super stressed out because I need to get like 10 students for my certification program, um, my affirmation might be I signed up 10 new students or I signed up 10 new clients or I signed a contract with X person, whatever it may be for you. I usually like to take whatever it is that's stressing me out, turn it into a positive thing and that's my affirmation for the day. You can also Google affirmations. There's millions of them for a million different things. Um, but I like to just get in the habit of creating one that's a, a based around whatever it is that I'm working on at the time. So below that, you see the elements of wellness. My company actually created nine elements of wellness because we believe it's not just fitness and nutrition. It's important to make sure that we're taking care of all areas of our life. Um, so there's intellectual financial, social, emotional, physical, nutritional, occupational, entrepreneurial, and spiritual. So next to each of those, and not every single day do I have one for each, but I at least take the time to think about it. So intellectual might be, what am I reading tomorrow? I personally, as a business owner and a leader, I like to read about one book a week. And so next to intellectual, I will write, read 20 pages of Think and Grow Rich. Financial, it might be look at my income statement, look at my cash flow statement, see how much money I have coming in, whatever it is that your financial goal is for that next day. Um, social, what are you going to do to increase the amount of people that you're connecting with? Are you going to go to a networking event? Are you going to go to a gym? Are you going to go to a commerce event? Whatever it may be. Emotional, how are you keeping yourself from not getting angry, it may be going to a counselor. It may be, you know, how are you dealing with your emotional wellness? It may be whatever it is that you're doing to keep yourself remaining calm and collected in your business and in your life. Physical is obviously your fitness. Um, any kind of movement, it could be just walking for five minutes, whatever it may be. Uh, nutritional, I usually like to write like what I'm eating for the day. There's not a lot of room there. Um, but I will put like eating low glycemic or not eating more than 1500 calories, whatever it is that I'm thinking about for my nutrition. And I may just put what I'm putting for creating for dinner tomorrow. Occupational, you know, if you're, if you're an employee of the company, you know, what are you doing to grow? Um, entrepreneurial, what are you doing to grow your business? Spiritual, what are you doing to connect to something far greater than yourself? Whatever your beliefs may be. Then I put my primary goals. What's the five things I want to accomplish tomorrow? Then I have secondary goals. That way, if I'm super productive and I get those primary goals done, then I can get to my secondary goals. You guys have learned about smart goals in the class. So make sure your goals are smart. Make sure it's not just I will work out tomorrow. It's I will work out at 10 a.m. at the gym close to my house or whatever it is that you're doing. Just make sure that you're you know, creating smart goals for that. Items to be delegated, this is huge. I know as business owners, you know, sometimes we feel like we have to do everything ourselves. What can we give to someone else? That way we can stay connected to our overall vision. Uh, you guys are learning how to create a growth plan. The biggest thing you can do for your growth plan is to learn how to delegate better. <laughs> and I know that can be difficult, but you'll want to put those things there. So this is, Laura's going to send this to you. You may love it, you may hate it, but either way, we'll send it to you and you'll be able to have it. Keep me posted on how this works for you. I feel like when I use this, the reason why I call it a miracle day planner is because I feel like magic happens when I do this. I feel like things I need for my business start to show up. I also teach about law of attraction, but that's not this class. But the more that I focus on growing my business and being in control of my day, the more magic that I think just happens, the more people that I meet, the more opportunities that present themselves, and the better I feel at the end of the day. Because I'm in control of my day, my day is not in control of me. So I hope that helps you. You guys can use that. You can recreate your own, but we will give you mine. Okay, let me move back to the presentation. Okay. So self-care for effective leadership. So make self-care a self-care plan for each stage of the small business growth. So I know most of you guys have completed week three. I just finished teaching that last week. And we talked about the five stages of small business growth. So as you know, there's existence, there's survival, there's success, there's takeoff, and there's maturity. Most of you guys have made it out of existence. But I know when I was in existence, 
my self-care was the first thing to go. And I'm a wellness professional. So my self-care going probably wasn't the smartest thing because um, that's, I teach that, but it was the first thing to go. I remember and this was way back in the day. My brother said to me, I never got, met anyone that got fat making other people skinny. And that might sound harsh, but it was actually true. It was funny. It was like I was helping so many people, but I was neglecting myself. And when you're in existence, you're, everything is you. You're the business. So it's like someone messages about the business. They're emailing. You're literally dropping everything for your business. Um, and then as you move into survival, you start to take those bad habits with you. So the next thing you know, you're in a successful business. Your business is making a lot of money. You're not going to the gym. You're not taking care of yourself. Your own self-care has been neglected way back in the first two levels that all of a sudden you got this amazing business and all of a sudden all the dreams that you wanted are coming true and these things that you tried so hard to create and now all of a sudden you're not happy because you're not healthy. And so I say this in a very passionate way because that helped, happened to me. I created something. I had this huge dream. I had all these big things I wanted to happen. Next thing you know, I had students all over the world. I was doing all the things that I dreamed of, but I literally was exhausted. And so it was a wake-up call for me. And so I stopped focusing so much on being everything to everybody. I started hiring more people. I started training people to do the things that I never thought that I would ever delegate to anybody. And next thing you know, I was making more money, working less time, and I was happier. So I say that with passion, like make sure that you get these, these self-care routines in place now because you'll get to a place where you'll be so burnt out that you'll work so hard and it won't even make you happy. I know so many people that have strived for huge financial numbers in their business and got there and realized that the money didn't make them happy. They weren't taking time with their family. They weren't taking, all they wanted to do was sleep because they were exhausted. So make sure that especially if you're in these beginning stages like existence or survival, that you're incorporating these self-care habits now because once you get bigger, it's everything is going to change. I know when I got to the success level, it was difficult because my clients were paying a lot of money. We were making a lot of money. So I was even more concerned about my business because I was like, well, this person just made, you know, eight, paid $8,000. I need to be everything to this person. And what I realized is by being everything to everybody, I was hurting myself and I was not showing up in the way that I needed to for my employees or my students. So the minute that I stopped doing that, like I said, I started making more money. I remember even going to boot camp classes and feeling like, oh, I can't go to this boot camp class because I need to be available if somebody needs me. And I would come out of the boot camp class and and somebody would have referred someone to my business or I made a sale online. It was always like the energy that I was putting out because I was taking care of myself was coming back to me. So I actually was making more money and having more production for my business by not even being in it. So if you're finding yourself doing that, not going to the gym because you need to stay home and work on a report or getting a pizza because you don't have time to cook or eat with your family, I highly, highly encourage you to take that time, take that hour for your own self care, or it's going to hurt you later. Um, you don't want to take those habits with you. And the one thing that people will think too is, oh, well, when I get to success, I'll have more time. I'll have more money. You know, once I get to this certain level, I'm going to have more time and money. So I'll, I won't worry about myself now, but I'll worry about it later. Those, those habits will carry with you no matter what. And so I strongly encourage you to really look at how you can incorporate these things into your life now and not later. So include self-care in your business growth plan. When you're writing your growth plan and you're writing about where you see your company three years from now, what do you see yourself doing? Do you see, you know, we talk about how, you know, as you grow as a leader, you can't be fixated on the task at hand or loyal to your comrades or single-minded or in isolation. But how can you incorporate self-care into those things that help your business scale? So if your overall business growth plan is to step out of the task at hand and be more of a leader and oversee things, how can you make sure that self-care is incorporated? 
Can you take off more days? Can you work later? Can you get up earlier? These are all questions that only you can answer. My job as a consultant, as a coach, is not to tell you what to do. It's to help you figure out what works best for you. So think about that. How can you put that in your growth plan? Um, you know, just an example in my growth plan, I plan on having way more teachers. I'm going to be in, in the background more telling them or helping them to design more curriculum, but I'm going to be spending more time on myself, on my meditation, on focusing on growing the business and really working on me so that it can, that energy will go out and make all of that better. Um, so that's how it can six, it, it can scale your business. I actually said to somebody that my business grew at the exact same rate as I did as a person. I can remember being younger thinking like, why isn't this happening fast enough? Or I can't believe I just didn't get this partnership or, you know, this, that, and the other, you know, all the things that we think as business owners. But once I finally feel like, you know, I arrived and I don't think we ever arrived, but we ever arrive, we continually grow. But once I get to a place where I really felt like I was starting to be successful, I realized that my business grew at the exact rate as I did as a person. And if my business would have grown any faster than I did, my business would have failed. So understanding the importance of how important it is for you to show up happy, healthy, taken care of with good sleep and taking care of your family. You can't get that stuff back. You can't get the time back. Um, and it will help you scale your business. So you want to learn how to work harder on yourself than you do on your business. If you work hard, this is from Jim Ron. A lot of you may have heard this. If you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. And I've seen this from experience. I, use, I grew up in a family where you were up at five in the morning and you didn't go to sleep till 10 o'clock at night. We were raised on a farm. We were hard workers. So my mentality was work, 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 work. And when I got to a place where I was being published on Forbes and making a lot of money and I wasn't happy and I was exhausted, I realized that that doesn't matter. In the end, it doesn't matter. And once I took that time and moved forward on my own self, everything became better. So spend a lot of time working on yourself. Put your priorities for you to be taken care of at the top of your business plan. Okay, if you guys have questions, we can just, I would love for you guys to hold them until the end and then we'll talk about all of them. But please make sure you ask them because I love questions. Okay, stress management techniques. Um, these are just some ideas of things that you guys can do on a daily basis to decrease your stress because let's be real, you know, being an entrepreneur is not for the faint of heart. You know, we have a lot of disappointments. We have a lot of discouragement. We have a lot of stress that comes from dealing with employees and things like that. Like we have to take time to manage our stress or you may end up finding yourself like being short with people or snapping at people or just not being able to be fully present when you are. If you're at work for 15 hours, but you're only truly present for like four of those, how effective is that? It'd be much more effective to be present fully present for four hours on your business than it would be to spend 15 hours and, and not be productive. So go for a walk at lunch. You would not believe how five minutes of a walk and focusing on your breath like I taught you in the beginning is going to change everything. Like literally, I used to walk around in circles around my kitchen counter when I couldn't go outside and it would immediately calm me down. Um, focusing on your breath, literally just closing your eyes and just visualizing everything being okay, uh, paying attention to your breath, finding a meditation that works for you. Yoga is so, so amazing for this. I'm also a yoga teacher. Laura is a yoga teacher. Um, yoga helps you get out of your head and into your body. So it's not just a physical movement and pretty stretches. It literally gets you out of your head and into your body. And we don't want to be in our heads. The more we can get into our body, the more creative we can be, the more that we can see the vision for our company, the more ideas come to us. Um, yoga is one of the most powerful things you can do for stress. I mean, yoga has so many benefits. You can lose weight from doing yoga. Um, I know it makes me nicer. <laughs> um, I feel way more productive when I'm doing yoga than any other time. Um, I like to listen to music when I can. It's not always an option. Even putting some nice, you know, 
sounds of water or rain in the background can sometimes just make you feel calmer. I do consulting for spas and I notice sometimes like just being in the spa, even if I'm in the office working, some of the things that they have, like the aromatherapy that they have going on in the spa or just the music that I hear, just you just instantly feel calmer when you're in those environments. So if you can create your environment to help you with your stress, that's so important. Like I said, meditate. Can't say that enough. Uh, journal, purge your brain. Uh, one thing that I learned a long time ago was called morning pages. Some of you may have heard of it. It's where first thing in the morning, you just get up and you write up to three pages on whatever you want to write about. And it could be that you're venting about your employee who's not get, getting things done. It could be that you're just writing your to-do list, but you're getting this stuff out of your brain and onto paper and you can throw it away. Um, it doesn't have to be three pages every single morning, but just getting that stuff out of your mind will help you feel less stressed out. Also, it helps you process things. Um, I was having an issue with, um, this is this kind of goes back to that whole loyal of con loyal to your comrades thing that we learn in class. Um, I hired someone that was a friend to create a certification and I was really stressed out because she wasn't getting some things done. And so I thought it was really her and I thought I was really upset with her. And then I started to write about it just to vent before I took it out on her, which is what would happen sometimes in that situation. And I was able to realize that, yes, it was potentially her, but it was also just my lack of feeling comfortable with putting this particular course out in the world at all. And so that helped me from projecting all of my irritation onto her um, and when she was only one part of it. So it helps you also see things for as they are, not what you think that they are. Uh, our stress sometimes can make us think that we're mad at a certain person or we're irritated about something, but really it's just projections of other things sometimes that are coming up. So journaling helps you see things for what they are and it helps you get things out without sending a nasty email or you know texting somebody something before you think about it. I like to purge my brain through journaling. Sure. Gratitude journal. Remember what's going right. This is so important. Sometimes we can get so in our business that all we're focused on is what's going wrong, that we forget what's going right. A few years ago, I had um, a bunch of stuff going on in my business. It was 24-7. It was rapid growth really quickly. And I had to go do a video. And the guy asked me, why did you start this business? And I literally looked at him for like three minutes and I was like, I don't even know at this point. Like, I really don't. And I completely forgot why I started it. I started it because I wanted to create powerful, passionate wellness professionals. I wanted to help business owners with their wellness, but I forgot that because I was so in it. And so from that point forward, I made a commitment that every day I was going to connect to what was going right in my business. And I was always going to stay connected to the why of it. They talk about as you get to that maturity level in your business that you got to stay connected to that entrepreneurial spirit. It's so important that we do because if we don't, we'll, we'll forget why we're here. So we need to focus on the bigger vision, but we also need to remember what helped us get started and we need to remember what's going right. So even if people who are really, um, uh, good about gratitude journals, they'll write two or three things every night before they go to bed that they're grateful for. And this actually really helps with those of you who go to bed worrying about everything. I know a lot of people do that, including myself. Um, and the gratitude journal has really helped me with that. I write down everything I'm grateful for before I go to sleep. And so when I go to sleep, I'm like, yay, I got a new student, or I'm so excited because I just taught this class, or we just got this biz big business partnership, or whatever it may be, that I actually, that actually helps you when you go to sleep so that you don't wake up irritated the next day. Because whatever thoughts that you go to sleep with mostly are going to frame how you sleep and what you do when you wake up. So if you go to bed mad about an employee, you're most likely going to wake up mad. So you need to try to reframe that before you go to sleep in some way. Rank your tasks. How important are they? Um, what I love about this course is it really teaches you how to get focused on the bigger vision and what's important. Uh, I know for me, one of the most powerful things that I've been taught in business is 
to focus on five things a year. And that's not your day to day. Of course, you're going to have your day to day, but five things and five things only. So it might be um, getting a partnership with the government, just an example, might be one of them. Another one might be to grow your social media presence. So if someone asks you to do something and it doesn't benefit those five things and five things only, the answer is no. That's how it was for me. Increased my business substantially, made me happier, made me want to work less. I, and this is a great thing for those of you who are like, can't say no. Five things, five things only, and they should help you get to your growth plan, get to that big vision. And so when someone comes out of left field and says, let's start blah, blah, blah. Well, it's not in my growth plan and it's not on my five things that I'm doing. So sorry, it's not just not in alignment with what I'm doing right now. I so appreciate it. But right now the answer is no. So rank your tasks. Less is more. And make sure you delegate. I know for me, and I'm sure all of you, it's difficult sometimes to have someone do something that you have done your whole life. Or the reason why your business was started because you have some sort of trade or skill. And now all of a sudden you got to teach somebody else how to do it. Take the time and the patience that it takes to do that. Because once you do, it will change everything. So delegation is so, so important. So here are some breathing exercises that I want to teach you guys that you guys can do on your own. So if you're overwhelmed because you just got a bad email or you or whatever it is that stresses you out on a daily basis, sometimes we don't even take enough time. We don't even take the time to breathe. And we need to think of breathing as like taking a shower. Like if you didn't take a shower this morning and you went to work, you're going to be dirty. You're going to feel crappy. You're not going to be at the top of your game. Well, we don't cleanse our bodies with our breath. We don't take the time to breathe and get things out of us. Emotions and stress, they st store in our body. They're not just in our mind. So taking a deep breath, doing the breathing that I taught you in the beginning in the, in the meditation, or this one particular one was created by Andrew Weil. And he said, he was actually one of my teachers in nutrition school. He said of all of the things that he's ever taught or been taught for anxiety or stress, this particular exercise worked the best. So basically what you do is you inhale through the nose for four, you hold the breath for seven, and then you exhale for eight. And you want to get to a place where you're doing that about eight times. And, you know, this can be, you can do this a hundred times a day. If this becomes a natural stress reaction for you, that's great. We want to try change our stress reactions. Um, our stress reactions might be to eat bad or to smoke a cigarette or to spend money or to work. You know, a lot of us probably are addicted to our work. Um, so if our natural stress reaction becomes to take a deep breath, and come back to the moment, we're going to be so much happier and healthier than if we go do things to kind of mask it, which is what we do when we're eating bad and things like that. Um, so in through the nose for four, hold the breath for seven, exhale slowly for eight, continue that cycle for eight times. It takes two minutes and it will change your entire world. Okay. The next one, which, um, this could be a whole nother class, but I wanted to bring it up just because it's so powerful. Um, this is something that you can Google as well. I also put a web website down here, tappingsolution.com, where you can get more information. Um, tapping is kind of like acupuncture without the needles. It's called emotional freedom technique. So we have these meridians in our body, and, they're, and I'm going to show you on the next slide where they are. And that's where we store emotions or stress. And so like if you and I get into an argument and I don't properly process it and do the things that I'm supposed to do to process it, that emotion will store in my body and it'll fester and it'll irritate me and I might take it out on someone else. Tapping helps to get it out. That way it doesn't show up later. Um, you can actually use tapping for so many things. Tapping is used for if you want to quit smoking, it's used for people want to manifest more money. It's used for seeing things differently. When you have all those emotions in your body, you tend to react in, in a different way. So what emotional freedom technique does is it helps move that energy so that you can feel more relaxed and calm. 
So that's what it is. I'm gonna show you on this next page how to do it. So you're basically just gonna tap. And, and I, I'll be honest, when I first heard of tapping and saw it, I thought it was the stupidest thing that I've ever seen. I was like, what are these people doing that can't be working? I was very judgmental of it. And then I did it and it changed my whole world. I remember the first time I did it, I was in a car. I had just worked like 12 hours. I was in the passenger side seat of my friend's car. Her kids were like screaming and I just felt like I was going to freak out. And so I was like, okay, use that technique that you learned that you thought was so stupid because maybe it'll work. And so I just started to tap on these areas. You tap on the top of the head, the eyebrow, the side of the eye, under the eye, under the nose, the chin, and the collarbone. And what you do is you just say whatever it is that you're feeling in the moment. So if you're top, tapping on the top of your head, and you can do it with left hand, right hand, both hands. And you just want to say, even though I'm really irritated right now and I feel like I'm going to freak out, I still accept myself. And so what that does is it acknowledges the problem, but then it also creates an affirmation to get out of it. So you basically just repeat whatever it is that's stressing you out as you go down through those different points and it gets it out of you. So there's been times where I've been so irritated when I started tapping on my head. And by the time I got to the second one, the side of the eye, I've literally forgot why I was mad. Um, it just gets it out of you. Once again, it's like taking an energetic shower. Um, like, and you can use it for anything. You know, even though I really don't want to go to this event tonight, I still love and accept myself. Or I'm going to go anyway. The go-to for tapping is to always say I love and accept myself because that helps you to accept where you're at. But you're not just flowering it over and saying I love and accept myself. You're actually stating what the problem is. Um, so this could be a whole webinar on its own, um, but there's thousands of videos out there. You can Google emotional freedom technique for stress. You can Google emotional freedom technique for increasing the sales in my business. You can do it for quitting smoking, eating. There's all kinds of stuff out there. Um, but basically what you do is just tap on those seven different areas while you're kind of acknowledging the problem and just seeing what comes up for you as you go through it. So that's emotional freedom technique. I'm actually going to pause for a second because I, I have a tendency of teaching a lot. So I want to just stop here for one second and see if anyone has any questions at this point so that I don't give more information without you guys kind of processing it. Any questions so far? I haven't had any come in on the chat yet, um, but... Folks, please feel free to type in any questions or thoughts. Awesome. Okay. So we'll move on from that. Okay. Tips for improved sleep. This is so important too. Um, these aren't in any particular order. I just put in here the different things that you can do to improve your sleep. So aromatherapy is one of these. Um, lavender oil in a diffuser can tend to help you make like calm you down, make you feel less stressed. I like sometimes if I don't have a diffuser just to carry like lavender with me and I'll just like smell it. And actually it's kind of meditative too, because you're also focusing kind of on your breath as you're smelling it. So aromatherapy is huge. Uh, melatonin is a natural hormone that causes sleep. So taking melatonin supplement in a small do doses has proven to promote restful sleep. When I first took melatonin, I didn't think it worked. And then I found out from a sleep doctor that it actually takes about two hours to kick in. So if any of you are taking it and you're finding that it's not working, you might not be taking it long enough in advance. So melatonin, I think, really works. Just take it in small doses. Yoga or meditation with our minds racing with our never-ending to-do list. Meditation or yoga before bed is a way to stop us from overthinking and focus solely on our breathing. Focusing on one thing will help your mind relax for sleep. And if you're somebody who wakes up kind of anxious, doing some kind of meditation before you go to sleep is massive for helping you wake up better. Um, when I didn't have a lot of time, now I meditate at night and in the morning. But when I, in the past, when I didn't have a lot of time, or I'd make the excuse that I didn't have a lot of time, I would always meditate before I went to sleep because it would make me wake up better. Drinking tea, uh, chamomile has a slight sedative factor to it and will help you ease into sleep. 
So if you like to drink things or even if you're finding yourself hungry before you go to sleep, this is something that will help you decrease your hunger. Also, anything hot helps with your digestion as well. Uh, keep your bedroom just a bedroom. This is so huge. And I'm actually in the process of moving. And right now, my office is right, literally, my bedroom has two rooms in it. And I have an office inside my bedroom. So when I move, that's the first thing that's going to change. Get your laptops, all of those things out of your bedroom. Keep it just as your bedroom. Because it's if you're on the computer, especially with the blue light and stuff like that, you're going to have a hard time going to sleep because it naturally stimulates your mind. Um, so try to turn off anything like that at least an hour prior to bed. Any removal of blue light is a perfect idea. Um, keeping times consistent, even on the weekends, I know this can be hard and depending on your schedule as a business owner or employee, uh, you may work, you know, 12 to eight one day, you may work 10 to six or 10 to midnight, whatever the number may be. Um, but try to keep it consistent. Another thing, and this isn't possible for everyone, but there's a digestive process that your body goes through from 11 PM to like 2 a.m. And sometimes we're first staying up too late, that process doesn't happen. So it can actually mess with your digestion. It can mess with, you know, weight gain. You can actually lose weight from having a better sleep schedule. So try to have a maintain a, a sleep schedule. If you're, if you are blessed and can go to sleep by 10 p.m., that's amazing. Uh, ideal schedules are like 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., but that's going to be different for everyone. I'm not going to preach that to everyone because I know for me, mine's different. But if you can, if you have that option, try to keep your schedule consistent. Awesome. So the last thing I wanted to say before we go into questions and answers is I offer a 30-minute consultation. And as I said, I do business and wellness consults. And this isn't a sales call. If you guys have more questions about anything that I talked about today or you want to learn how to incorporate them in, I always I, – everyone's different. So the things I taught you today may not – none of them may even work for you. And I have a million others. <laughs> so if you want to take an opportunity to you know, get that 30-minute consultation, I'm booking them for like two weeks from now because I'm moving. But I wanted to invite anyone that listened to that call to take advantage of that. And we can talk about your business. We can talk about your wellness. But mostly I just want to help you um, be able to, to create the life that you love and be able to have a happy and healthy life as you build your business. So like I said, it's not a sales call. It's more for me to just help you get clarity around whatever it is that you want to work on with your wellness. So if you guys want to ask me any questions at all, I'm here. Thank you, Krista. That was awesome. I know I have a list of things that I want to start <laughs> incorporating into my day, even that meditation at the beginning, just a couple of minutes, um, sitting with your eyes closed, focusing on your breath and my breath, you know, that was, that was pretty powerful. So thank you for mm -hmm. sharing such, you know, tangible and accessible strategies. I think it's an awesome place to start. Um, and I will, you know, as Carissa mentioned, I will share that um, Miracle Day Planner with everybody following the call, and this will be recorded, but please take advantage of having her on the line if there are any questions um, that you have. Thank you for those comments. Yeah, I so enjoyed that. I love leadership and wellness combined. Yeah, it's really, it's really interesting. I mean, I, um, or here's a question for you all, you know, if, um, if anybody has kind of thought about the importance of self care in your growth plan, um, or those of you who have, you know, recently started the emerging leaders program, um, you know, if, if that has crossed your mind as you're kind of going through the strategy and leadership module, um, if you have thought much about yourself, <laughs> yes, your vision, yes, your business, yes, your strategy, but what about you? Um, you know, I'd, I'd kind of love to hear if any, if that's brand new for anybody or if that's something that you've thought about before. And maybe it's something to think about and pick up in a discussion on iConnect later. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Sue, for sure. Um, she asked if she would be getting copies of the presentation. I can, I actually mm -hmm. sent that to Laura so she can send that out to you guys as well. For sure. Great. Yeah, when I post um, the recording, I can attach the slides as well. So here's a question um, from Jennifer. Any suggestions for how to incorporate these practices into your business for the benefits of employees? That's a great question. Yeah, that's an, a great question. Um, if you have it in your budget, I think if you could bring in someone that could do live lectures with your employees or even having someone that can do a presentation like this for your employees, um, you, usually that goes through the human resources department. They can, I've seen in companies do challenges with their employees. If you're working on like no budget, you can do like different challenges with your employees where you may like send out an email about meditation and challenge people to do meditation, um, different things like that. You can start, some companies have actually nominated someone as almost like a, a wellness coordinator and it's not usually a paid position. It's usually someone who's passionate about wellness within the company and kind of give that to them to do. Um, or if you're passionate about it yourself, you can also do that. But anybody within that could kind of take that on is always great. Um, or like I said, getting people to um, getting people to come in and teach on different topics. I know what I do sometimes is go in and do different lectures monthly for companies on different things. Um, but there's lots of things that you can do for free. If you have the manpower, if you have like a human resources coordinator, you know, maybe assign – a, well, a wellness task force to her to cr start creating things to get employees engaged. Does that answer your question? That's great. And I also, just something to add, because we, at Interise, we tried, um, you know, a, a wellness program. And just kind of by putting the idea out there, you might be interested to know what other skills your employees have to share. Um, so for instance, I, you know, did a weekly morning yoga class for people that wanted to come. Um, and so just by starting the conversation or even modeling some of the behavior yourself as a CEO, you might be surprised to see what people say they do outside of the office <laughs> and what they can bring to the table. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. You may have someone who's super passionate about that, that you may not even know. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, that brings up a good point. I had a company, the VA actually reached out to me about possibly doing some stuff. And one of the things I told them to do was do a survey to their employees and see not only what interest there was, but also if anyone in there had anything to bring to the table. So you may just want to simply send out a questionnaire if there's anything that anyone wants to contribute or what they may be interested in. You can do that as well. Awesome. All right. Any other Anything questions? else? Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed that and it was helpful. And like I said, stay in touch. You can reach out, email me. I'm here. Um, would love to answer your questions. So, and you can still ask them today because I'm still here. So. <laughs> ah, here's one more question. A really good one. Um, how do I introduce a wellness program to multicultural people that don't get it? <laughs> yeah. um, oh, that's a good, that is a good question. Mm. Um, maybe you could start by doing, I don't know if you have an employee newsletter or anything like that. You could put some tips in there, like five reasons why you should incorporate a wellness program. I think anything that you can do to educate them is going to be the best thing that you can do if they're not familiar with that stuff at all. Uh, whether it be by, you know, printing out articles and putting them in the break room or sending out a newsletter, things like that, I think would be the best way without being in their face. Cause some people have to get it on their own. They don't want someone in their face <laughs> kind of pushing it on them. So I think that would be the best way. And Laura, mm. you can have some suggestions as well. I was just thinking about what you said earlier about surveying, ask them what, you know, would be helpful in their day or what they're interested in learning um, or doing. I think that would be a great way to just kind of surface different ideas and things that will actually work for people. And you referenced that before. You have to find something that works for you. Yep. <laughs> Somebody asked for, uh, more about the tapping solution. 
Oh, yes. To talk, to talk more about the tapping solution. <laughs> yeah, the tapping solution is super powerful. Like I said, the website that I put on there has a bunch of different um, videos and things like that. You can also just Google emotional freedom technique. But like I said, what it really does is remove emotional stuff that may be storing in your mind or in your body. Um, it also helps you. What I love about emotional freedom technique is it helps you to see things for how they are instead of how you're projecting them. Like I'll give you an example. I had a client one time who came into my office and she was really upset. And this isn't really a business thing, but it, it'll give you an example. She came in and said that she was really upset because she didn't think that her mother loved her. And I said, well, why don't we do some tapping? And so she did some tapping and like, she literally got to like the fourth section on her body. And she was like, oh my goodness, I'm expecting someone to love me who never learned to love. And so just by tapping on those four or five places, she was able to see that it wasn't that her mother didn't love her. It was just that her mother didn't know how to show it. And by removing the old emotions and the old stuff that's kind of stored in there, she was able to see things for what they are and not what her emotions and trauma and thing like that was projecting it to be. So it can really help you um, in situations like that where you're kind of getting mad at somebody and you don't really know why or, um, you know, you maybe have self-destructive habits like smoking or drinking or eating bad. It'll help you understand too, like, okay, I'm eating this because I'm irritated, not because I actually need it. So it, it helps you to see things for what they are and not for what your old fears and traumas and stress and emotion that stores in your body makes you think that it is. Does that make sense? Yeah. It also That's can great. really calm you down. So if you're like stressed out and stuff like that, it can calm you down in just a minute. Like I said, I was in the car with those kids and I felt so bad because I was like, I can't listen to this. And within minutes, and not only, I should say, not only did it calm me down, but they all calmed down. Because people around us, this is another thing, like people around us kind of react to us. So if we come into a room stressed out and irritated, people pick up on that. We're energetic beings. So your employees may pick up on that stress and the next thing you know, they're stressed. Um, so it also changes your energy, which also show, changes how you show up in the world as well. So just yeah. some more info on that. <laughs> yeah. So one last question here I'll share um, about the Miracle Day Planner. When is the best time of day to fill it out? at night for the next day or in the morning? I thought I, for me personally, I like filling it out like right before I get ready to go to bed. I think about the next day. Um, that's what I do. Uh, but it's, everyone's different. I've noticed I've given this to hundreds of people and people tell me that they printed it out for the whole year and they do it at the beginning of the month. Find what works for you. But I find for me, it helps me really get clarity and control if I do it the night before the next day. So then I know I'm waking up at six. I'm going to do my emotional freedom technique or my breathing meditation. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to go to my meetings. I'm going to work on my business. I also schedule when I'm doing emails, when I'm on Facebook. Uh, that doesn't always happen, but when I'm doing good, that's what happens. So short answer, the night before for the next day is what I do. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you again so much um, for all this information. I will share the slides and presentation and day planner with you all on the call. Um, yes, any, any parting thoughts, Carissa? No, thank you guys so much. I mean, even just doing this presentation has helped me just get more excited about what I do. So thank you guys for giving me this opportunity to be here. And like I said, reach out. Any questions are great with me. It, it helps me to learn what people need. So don't hesitate to reach out either on uh, iConnect or you can straight email me as well. So thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay.